Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Boeing may be going head-to-head -head with Bombardier, Solar Impulse 2 conquers the Pacific Ocean, FAA approves a UAV nighttime operation. I'm Brie Cross, it's April 25th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. It could be said that competition begets innovation, and that seems to be the case with Boeing. It's reported that Boeing is considering a 150-seat version of its new 737 MAX airplane in light of competition from Bombardier C-Series airliners. The Wall Street Journal reports that according to its sources, the airplane, which for now the company is calling the 737 MAX 7X, would have a significantly longer range and carry more passengers than the 126-seat model currently in development. It's reported that Boeing offered steep discounts to United Airlines on the 737 MAX to win their business. Delta, meanwhile, is expected to announce that it is closing a deal with Bombardier for as many as 125 C-Series airplanes later this month. It's surmised that Boeing would need a buy-in from United, which reportedly placed an order for 45 current 737 airplanes, and Southwest, which will be the launch customer for the 737 MAX. So far, according to the report, Boeing has only 60 orders for the smallest version of its re-engined airliner. It had always been known that crossing the Pacific Ocean would be one of the most difficult parts of the around-the-world journey by the solar-powered Solar Impulse 2 airplane. With a careful balance of solar power combined with storage batteries, this unique experimental aircraft set out to prove that through sun-powered electric energy, the globe could be circumnavigated. The three-day flight from Hawaii to the U.S. mainland concluded with its landing on Saturday at 11.45 p.m. Western Time at Moffett Field in Mountain View, California. However, as pilot Bertrand Picard arrived on the California coast, he intentionally flew a slightly diverted course that allowed him to first circle the San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge prior to turning south for his final landing destination. The flying time from Hawaii to California was 62 hours. Picard and Andre Borschberg will continue their flight, making three more stops as they cross the United States on their way towards the Atlantic Ocean. We will keep you posted on the progress of their continued flight around the world. After the break, FAA letter of authority for UAV operation expanded. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. As the regulations for UAV operations still seems to be swimming around in the dark, the FAA has now authorized commercial night flights by a UAV operator. According to the Wall Street Journal, the U.S. branch of Toronto-based Industrial Skyworks has been given the authority to conduct aerial inspections of buildings and roofs using specifically equipped UAVs flown by certificated pilots who also hold at least a third-class medical. The FAA had previously required all commercial activity to end at sunset. In a 24-page decision, FAA Flight Standards Service Chief John Duncan said that the ruling came after 16 months of consideration and administrative proceedings. The aircraft must carry anti-collision lights that would be visible to any pilot of a manned aircraft or anyone else at a distance of 5,000 feet. It's reported that the FAA is expected to issue their proposed rules for widespread commercial operations of small UAVs in the coming weeks. After these messages, XTI Aircraft seeks additional funding.
Bluebird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. And now Christopher is going to take us around the patch. Thanks, Bree. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom with Airborne Unlimited, bringing you today's Around the Patch. After reportedly having success with initial funding, the XTI Aircraft Company is accelerating its TriFan 600 vertical takeoff airplane development program to create a MAN 65% technology demonstrator. They are redoubling efforts to secure $3 million in additional investments. The Eagles of Strike Fighter Squadron VFA-115 participated in three weeks of close air support exercises with the Australian Defence Force from March 26 through April 15. Over the course of the exercises, the Eagles expended over 47,000 pounds of ordnance. The first Lockheed Martin LM-100J commercial freighter aircraft has reached major production assembly milestones at aeronautics sites located in Meridian, Mississippi and Clarksburg, West Virginia. Wing production has begun in Marietta and other structural parts are in production at the Meridian and Clarksburg facilities. A former Allegiant Airlines pilot has filed a lawsuit claiming the carrier fired him because of his age. Among other things, the suit alleges that a supervisor told a simulator instructor to fail him. The suit claims employees over 40 years old are being targeted. Chapison recently introduced an installation option for its iPad-based mobile flight deck, Electronic Flight Bag. It now provides access to both IFR and VFR real-time flight data. It allows switching between IFR and VFR data on the real-time data-driven on-route map. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Back to you, Bree. Thanks, Christopher. The ANN crew is packed up and headed out to bring you the latest news from the Aircraft Electronics Association's annual convention being held this week in Orlando, Florida. And at this event, we're not only bringing the news to you through our normal channels, we are also bringing it to you live. Here's our planned schedule. On Wednesday, April 27th, live coverage from the floors of the 59th Annual AEA Convention and Trade Show runs from 8.30 a.m. until 12.15 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll be covering the opening ceremonies, awards, and an address by FAA Administrator Michael Huerta at approximately 9.15 a.m. Eastern Time during this block of broadcast time. Our new product introduction program begins and you won't want to miss it. Then at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on Thursday, April 28th, we continue with our extended coverage of the most fascinating new products, programs, and people. But wait, there's more. We continue on Friday, April 29th at 11 a.m. Eastern Time when we webcast additional live coverage of more fascinating news and original products and programs. You'll have a choice of web connection, so please join us live from the floor at AEA 2016. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.